Hey everybody. So I'm going to start the culling and I want to thank everyone who gave me advice about my process. Um, I had been thinking about so many different systemic and organized ways to um, approach this. And my gut was telling me just go shelf by shelf. And that's what most of you said, go shelf by shelf. But um, a lot of folks also said, several folks also said, start with the ones you know you're gonna keep or probably gonna keep. Those will go quickly and easily. So um, that's what I'm doing. I keep these uh, decks under my altar space, which is right here. So um, under that little uh, table I, uh, is where I keep these decks. And they are, sometimes, some of them are seasonal, but mainly they're ones that I use a lot and that I like. So I'm going to start. Here we go. I can't believe I'm finally doing this. Thanks for everybody for commenting and giving me good hints about how to do this. So here's the first one up. And there's no doubt in my mind about this one. It's the Gaian. So this is the Llewellyn edition. I did at one point have the Schiffer edition as well, um, but I gifted that to a friend because I, I thought, well, I don't need that one. I never use it. I have the um, Llewellyn one. And then I also have this one which is the indie one from Joanna. So this is um, by um, Joanna Paul Colbert, um, Guy and Tarot, and this is the uh, independent one. It's large. Um, oh, I'm like, where's the fool? <laughs> On my altar. <laughs> um, so yeah, so these are good size cards and I use these, but um, mainly like for altar cards and stuff, the one I use the most is the Llewellyn. Llewellyn. Um, the next one up is also a bag. These bags I got at Reader Studio made by Sheila Height. This is um, an Oracle deck, the Messenger cards by Sandra Kuntz. And I really love this. I use it. I don't use it so much in the summer. It's kind of more of a fall, winter um, deck. So I haven't actually used it that much over the summer, but that's definitely a keeper. I'm wondering if I should really go through cards on all these decks, because otherwise I'll be here like all day. All right, next up is another favorite. This is the next world, definitely a keeper. I also have the large size of this one, but it's in my closet, so that'll be coming out later. Another one that's a no-brainer, Tarot de Saint Croix. So this is the second edition with the uh, black at the bottom and borderless. So that is a no-brainer. Uh, somewhat recent deck I just got in maybe March, February, March. I love, love, love this. This is the Fifth Spirit by uh, Charlie Claire Burgess. I use it a lot and um, it, I get amazing readings from it. Um, I like this version of the Rider Waite Smith that Wiser came out with. I like the um, color palette and I like that they did attempt to be more inclusive. Another new ish deck, fairly new, is the Unfolding Path, and I will definitely be keeping that one. Hey, this is really easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you start with the ones you really like. World Spirit Tarot, another deck that I love. I feel like this, I don't really see people using this one that much, so I think I will show a few cards from it. Um, this is a really nice deck. I think this is the indie version. There is a, a mass market version. I love the art, colorful. Um, again, there is um, a fair amount of um, inclusivity in this deck. Um, um, Lauren, what's her name? Lauren Onka O'Leary is the creator of this deck. And the art is by J. 
Jessica Godino. So that is also another one that is staying in my collection. Love that one a lot. And again, this is another deck that I don't tend to use too much in the summer. It's more of a um, wintery deck. This is the Star Tarot. This is the edition um, that has been made on Borderless and um, Matt. These are the majors. I put this in order a while ago because I was, I don't know why I was doing a deck study or something. Anyway, this one I'm keeping. I have the shiny edition. Um, I, you know, I'll probably gift that or pass that along because I really don't need two of them. That's by Kathy McClellan. This is my beloved Thea's Tarot and this is the 1984 edition. And um, Rose, oh shoot, what is Rose's channel? She doesn't post videos anymore. I forget what, Soul Dance? I can't remember what her channel name is, but she's the one who told me about this. This deck came out in 1984 by Ruth West, and um, it has recently been reissued. It's black and white. It's uh, definitely a feminist deck, and I love it to pieces. I wouldn't part with it for anything. Um, one of the things that I love about this, well, there's many things. It's a feminist deck. It's from 1984. Um, it was made in Somerville, Massachusetts, which is about five or six miles from where I grew up. And um, right uh, in the same town where the Boston Women's Health Book Collective had their office. They're the Our, Our Bodies Ourselves people. And so I just have a deep connection to that deck and I'm so happy that I got one of the original versions. It was super, super musty when I got it. The story is that it was found in someone's um, basement or cellar. Um, and I'll tell you, um, it smelled like it because I don't know about other parts of the country, but here in New England, basements, uh, cellars tend to get musty and um, moldy. <laughs> and they smell. So things that are stored there can get um, smelly. This is a Morgan Greer. I don't, the cover fell off. You know how these tuck boxes go. Um, I'll be keeping that. Love that one. This is the Urban Crow. And what I did, this is MJ Cullinane. And what I did with this is, um, this is the Mass Market from Hay House. And also the extension pack, um, the indie extension pack from um, MJ. And I put them together. Their, their backs are different. So here's the backs and here's the backs. But they're the same size. So I can shuffle them and use them together or I can separate them and use them separately. Um, this is, a, again, a deck that is more to me fall and winter, um, and I haven't been using that for a while, but that's definitely a keeper. Another definite keeper is this one, Gentle Tarot by Mari in the Sky. Um, heal yourself, heal, heal the earth. That is one that I also love. Um, this is the Herbal Tarot by Michael Tierra, who is a um, traditional Chinese uh, medicine herbalist. And Candace Canton is the artist. And so for this, um, each one of the cards, it's Rider Waite Smith based. Um, and each one of the cards has um, an herb on it as well as the, the tarot card. And I got this deck maybe 1989, 1990. I think it was before that from Michael Tierra because I was at the um, International Herb Symposium in um, near Worcester, Mass, sponsored by Rosemary Gladstar. And Michael was there and he was selling those decks in addition to herbal stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute, tarot and herbs in one thing? Whoa. Um, and so I bought it and I've had it ever since. And you can see it's kind of beat up. It's got tape all around it. 
Um, I've actually uh, ended up buying a second one of these because one of our dogs chewed up the first one, but only wrapped like maybe five or six cards. So um, I bought, <coughs> excuse me, a new version and then just took the five uh, cards that had been chewed up and replaced them. But, you know, 90% of the deck is the original deck. For Hoxa, um, this is a deck that's fairly new to me, but I plan on keeping that, at least for the time being. Um, Radiant, Rider Waite, uh, Smith. So this was the deck that I learned to read tarot with. It wasn't my first deck, but it was the deck that I got when I thought, you know what, I'm gonna learn how to read tarot. And I pulled a card every day, and then I went up to like three cards a day after I had kind of graduated from one card a day for a year. And I remember looking back on my journal and seeing there were like maybe only five or six days, either I had been traveling or I was sick or whatever, that I didn't pull a card. So for a whole year, um, I pulled a card almost every day. And I'll tell you, for a sanguine, flitty Aries son, I was really proud of myself that I did that. Anyway, that I, I could never get rid of that deck because that's the deck I learned to read on. And then there's this one, Delta Enduring. So no, 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 I will never get rid of this one either. All right, next box. This is uh, Oracles. So this one is, um, oh, this is, oh shoot, what is the name of this? Oh darn. Oh, I'm so mad at myself. I can't remember the name of this deck, but I love it. It's just great. It's um, a wonderful oracle, colorful, um, has the chakras, it has goddesses and gods from the uh, Hindu pantheon. Oh, my favorite, this one, the chai. Uh, I love this deck, and um, after I make this video, I'm going to type in below the name because I feel bad that I forgot the name. I mean, you know, when you have this many decks, it's hard to remember the names. Okay. Here's another one that will never be going any place. This is the Living Wheel Astrology Cards by my dear friend, Patrick Fogarty. That is a deck that I use almost daily, um, lay it out on my altar. Um, so that is going nowhere. This is um, Connected and Free by Lauren. Oh, what is her name? Lauren. Yeah. I forget, Lauren, Lauren Aletta. And um, the artist is Tegan Sweeney, and she is from Australia. This deck goes in and out of print. I think currently it's out, but I really like this deck a lot. I think Lauren herself is um, somewhat controversial, um, but I really like that deck. This is Soul Trees. I have several decks. Um, this is by, oh my gosh, why am I not remembering people's names? Allison Williams Yee. This is the Ascension one. And I have the regular Soul Trees too, but that's coming up in a later part. So this one I use um, just to pull a card. I love it. These two I'm gonna pull out together, the Illuminated Earth and the Faceted Garden by Claire Mack. Uh, keeping those and interestingly um, I, I love those they're in my you know bin of decks under my altar that I use regularly so I backed uh, Claire's tarot and when I got the tarot I just was like oh no this doesn't speak to me I, I love her art but I couldn't read with that tarot so I, I traded it with a friend another one that I absolutely adore is Flora, Forces, and Fauna. Um, this is by Forces, sorry, Forces, Flora, and Fauna. This is by Colleen Hardy, who did the Hardy Tarot. Um, beautiful, 
Um, and again, it's, you know, got flowers and trees and plants and animals and storms and skies and ocean and, oh, it's just stunning. The art is beautiful. I love this deck um, and I use it quite regularly. So again, not going anywhere. Um, this is sort of a similar one. This is by Jessica Bott, Phenomena Oracle deck. This one, I don't think I'm going to keep. At least I'll put it in a maybe um, pile, but that one I don't think I'm going to keep. All right, another deck that is definitely not going anywhere. This is the Soul Flower Plant Spirit Oracle. Um, I adore this. Um, let's see. Um, it's by Lisa. Um, wow, I'm like really feeling bad. Lisa Estabrook, that I am not remembering people's names. And you can see how beautiful this deck is. And I um, usually draw um, a card uh, at the beginning of each month as a plant spirit that I want to work with. Um, depending on the time of year, I might, you know, take that herb or pick it from my garden if I have it. Um, right now, this month, uh, I'm working with hydrangea, which is um, transmutation. So that is that. Um, Secrets of the Mystic Grove. So I had issues with this deck when I first got it because there is absolutely zero diversity or inclusivity in it. It's all, you know, cis, skinny, pretty, conventionally pretty white chicks. But then I found out it was from pre-existing art. So I thought, okay, I really do like this. Um, it's really kind of kooky. And it's really, I don't know, um, it's got these women that have birds and flowers and all kinds of things in their hair. And then it also has animals and flowers. I'm kind of seeing a theme in some of these cards. Um, yeah, so I really love this deck. And this is more of, this is sort of a spring summer deck for me. Um, although sometimes in the winter when I want a breath of fresh air, I will pull that out. This is one of my top favorite um, Oracle decks. It is The Morning Calm by Saya Kelleher. Oh, hey, I remembered her name. <laughs> Yikes. Um, oh, I just love this. Love, 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 love. Um, I haven't used this for a while. Um... But you see, that's what happens when you have so many decks. You can't get to the ones you really love and cherish. I get great readings from this. I basically just will pull one card at a time from this deck. Um, mostly with oracles, that's what I do. Um, I don't do spreads or anything. So Morning Calm is also not going anywhere. Um... Spirit Animal Wisdom. This one I kind of use alternate or sometimes I'll pull this for my animal card of the month and other times I'll pull this. I'm kind of on the animal spirit uh, now and this one's taking a back seat, but I go back and forth with these. So I'm going to keep both of these. And then this one, um, this one, I haven't used in a million years, so I think I'm going to put that in the maybe box. Uh, this is a new deck, Sea Soul Journeys Oracle Cards, and I got it this summer, and so I'm still going to play around with this one because it's new. This one is um, Asha Frost Sacred Medicine Cards with the art by um, Steph Littlebird. These are two um, indigenous women who have made this beautiful deck. Um, uh, Asha is a healer um, and um, a, a shaman, and um, I love the guidebook, and um, I love the art. It's, it's really lovely. This is a Hay House deck that came out earlier this year. Love it. 
This one is the Herbal Astrology. I really like this. It is by uh, Adriana Ayalis um, with artwork by Josephine Clerks. Really beautiful art. It's You can see from the cover and here are some cards on the back. It's got a very muted color palette. So although it's a plant deck, it's not one that I felt drawn to use um, so much in the summer. Now, as we get into autumn, um, I will probably start to use that more um, because of the color palette. It's a great deck. It had, um, it wasn't just your standard Western comfrey, rosemary, lavender, blah, blah, blah. It had a lot of different, it had some um, toxic herbs, poisonous herbs, hallucinogenic herbs, um, and er some herbs I had never heard of. Um, so I, I, I felt like I learned, I learned from using that deck. Um, the Witch's Wisdom is a deck I'm really enjoying. Hey House, please do better with the cardstock. Horrible, horrible cardstock. So thick and cardboardy. It's really hard to shuffle. But that doesn't stop me from um, loving that deck. And then my beloved Daughters of the Moon. This is one of my first uh, decks ever. I think it was maybe my second or third deck that I ever got. And it is a feminist deck. It came out right after Mother Peace, although I think they were uh, being developed at the same time as Mother Peace. I love that deck so much. I will never, ever, ever um, get rid of that deck. I also have the black and white. That's the one that was the second deck that, or second or third deck that I got, the black and white version. The colored uh, version came out um, years after the black and white. But I tend to use the one with full color. This is um, Invoking the Goddess Oracle in Action. This is by Lisa de Saint Croix, who also, of course, made Tarot de Saint Croix. I really love this. Um, so it's goddesses, and let's see. Oh, who have we got here? Dorga. So on the front is a, um, a painting of the goddess, and then on the back, Lisa has put um, a poem for each one of the goddesses, and then like an affirmation or a key statement. So for example, for Dorga, it's courage. Use your strength and power to fight for good. I might have to leave that one out on my altar. Love this deck. And this one is not going anywhere. All right. Where are we? Oh. Mm. This is my unicorn deck. It's the beautiful, lovely Greenwood reprint. So this is not an original. I got this from Make Playing Cards. And I am really glad I did not procrastinate about this. You can see these cards, or the stock cardstock is so slippery, I can't even hold it without it slip sliding all over the place. Let me just get a smaller group here. So this is artwork by Cheska Potter. Most of you know this is a pretty famous or infamous deck. And Mark Ryan is the, uh, and maybe even John Matthews are the, the creators of the guidebook and the system. So um, this is kind of a catch-22 situation. So Cheska does not want the deck to be reprinted. Um, and um, Mark does want to republish it. Um, but Cheska released the artwork um, on... Um, she just um, posted a file of the artwork, I think um, on a, a Facebook uh, group. And I downloaded it, but I'm so technically challenged, I couldn't figure out how to format it. So it just sat there and I never did anything with it. Um, and then in an out of print, out of print rare and indie tarot deck Facebook group or something recently, someone said, what are the, What's your unicorn deck or what are the decks you most want? So I put 
green wood, and I even put in parentheses, reprint is fine, or, and um, Wisdom of the Kali. I, I'm sorry, I'm not saying that correctly, but oh well. And um, I got feedback on both those decks and ended up getting both of them. So the feedback on the Greenwood one was that somebody had, uh, had a reprint of it. So we messaged each other and I was gonna buy it from this person, but they live in Australia. And I thought, Ugh, I'm not gonna pay $50 to have this deck shipped. And then I thought, well, if she could make, got a reprint of it, maybe it's on Make Playing Cards. So I went to Make Playing Cards and sure enough, there it was. So I printed it, you know, had it printed up and sent off and I got my unicorn deck. Since that happened, apparently Mark Ryan got in touch with Make Playing Cards and asked them to take the file down. So now you can't get it on fake playing cards anymore. I feel so bad because I made a video telling people, hey, you can get this on make playing cards, but sorry, no, you can't. So it's sort of a this catch 22 because Cheska doesn't want it reprinted even, and she, you know, kind of put the um, files of the cards out in the public domain. Um, and so they ended up on Make Playing Cards. And then Mark asked Make Play, he wants to republish it, so he doesn't want people getting it on Make Playing Cards. But it's just like this, I don't know what's ever gonna happen with that deck. Anyway, I'm really happy to say I got a copy of it. it makes me very happy. So this is one of my most recent decks. This is the Raven uh, Dream Tarot by uh, MJ Cullinan, and it is a, the first edition, I guess. Um, so this is the indie version. I guess Hay House is going to uh, release it um, in a few months, not sure when. Another of, the, of my most recent decks, I'm really enjoying this. It's called Tarot of the Great Outdoors. It is by J.Q. Gordon and art by Sharice Steber. Steber. Um, it, the major arcana are um, uh, American um, national and state parks and I, it, I love it. It's, it's just the artwork is great. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I will be keeping that one at least for the time being. The next one up is the True North Oracle by um, Carrie Paris. This is um, a charm casting kit with cards. So you pull cards and cast charms and there's a, a spread cloth um, and I love that. And I'm really hoping um, once I have pared down my collection that I will have more time for um, decks and, and um, charm kits like that because uh, that is a really great system. I love it, um, but I just don't use it that much because I have too many decks. All right, last but not least for the starting. Um, so this is the Threads of Fate Oracle Shadow Edition. And I really do like this deck. It's, it's, it's really quite beautiful and the quality is incredible. I like in the guidebook um, how there's, so there's a, let me show you the cards. Um, so you draw a card. So this is the universe. And for the, I don't know, there's different categories. But anyway, for most of the cards, when you look in the guidebook, there's a crystal, a plant, and an animal for each of the cards. So that's kind of nice when you pull the card, you can put it on your altar. I usually, it's one of those ones I just pull once a month um, or once every turn of the uh, wheel. And then I'll also um, put, get out a crystal if I have the crystal and an animal card that goes with it and the herb. So I like that. That's kind of a, um, you know, a nice way of using that deck. This is the myth mythical goddess. And I'm very happy that I got this from the creator. So it's not on the horrible, horrible, horrible cardstock that it got reprinted on. 
This is the original version. And it's, I like it. I probably will take it out of my most used section and, you know, put it somewhere else after I've finished culling. I don't really use it that much, but I do enjoy it. Next up, Shimmering Veil. Oh, um, this is by um, Sage Holloway and Catherine uh, Skaggs. And I believe Sage has passed away fairly recently. All right, this is Scylla Conway. This is an interesting deck. Um, I was going to order this deck, and a friend of mine said, you know, I've got two of them. I'll just give you my backup. Very kind of them. So I have this deck, and it's really not a deck that I thought I would ever, the art style I would ever be attracted to. Um, it's not really my my usual thing. It's a little bit more um, abstract, although these don't look that abstract. There we go. Um, then I'm usually um, attracted to, but I love this deck, and I find it, uh, powerful to read with and easy that you know even though I thought oh this is a little abstract but I don't really have any problems reading with it this is a cherished new deck I got this year we moon tarot um, printed and published and collated by the wonderful women at we moon um, they've been making a calendar and date book and planner for I think 40 years now and they took um different pieces of their art from over that 40 years and made a tarot deck with it um this is um I forget, uh, oracle of the she by david spangler and i think the guidebook also um is written by, uh, has con contribu contributions from John Matthews. So this one um, is staying. It's something that uh, I really want to work with more. The book is really good. So I'm gonna wanna get into that one more. Um, this is the Wild and Sacred Feminine deck. Um, this one I think I'm gonna put in the maybe pile. I don't really use it that much. I like it. It's a kind of a re, um, making of what was called something like the Mother's Oracle, Mother's something Mother's, I don't know, by the same creators, Nikki Duart, Elizabeth Marglin, um, and illustrations by Jenny Shaw. Um, and I like it, but I really don't use it that much. So that I'm going to put into the maybe box. Um, oh, this is by Hannah Willow, the Folk Tales Oracle. I love Hannah's art. She is um, from the UK and she, um, I think she said her husband hand stamped all these bags. And um, if you're not familiar with her artwork, it's just gorgeous. It's animals and, and the uh, countryside in the UK. It's really lovely. Um, and I, I do like this a lot. Um, I have not used it that much, but I feel like now coming into fall and winter, it just has that vibe and um, I will be using it more. Um, I, I, I haven't used it a real lot, but it is uh, fairly new to my collection and I like it quite a bit. So that one I will be keeping. That's a great little guidebook that uh, Hannah also wrote. This is another deck by Hannah. This is um, called The Moon in the Hair. It came with a set of runes, um, which she hand made and drew on. And it's very small. It's only got 12 cards, so um, one card for each month. And I will often pull one out and, um, you know, just put it on my altar for uh, the time being, a month or so. It's really lovely. So it's got bunnies and moons, and I love both of those things, except for when the bunnies eat my flowers. I don't like that. Um, oh, this is uh, Kelly Fitzgerald's Oracle, the um, um, something journey cards. 
um, and I love that the shape. These are this is a really lovely uh, deck. This is another one that I would like to explore and dive more deeply into, but I just haven't done it because I've got too many decks. Last but not least for today anyway, we have Wisdom of the Divine Feminine and Wisdom of the Shadow. I got these two beautiful decks last summer. They are by... Um, uh, artwork by Jenny Hahn and the author is uh, Jessica Ricchetti and they work together to create these two beautiful decks. I, I really like those decks a lot. Um, I, I do think I'll be keeping them. I might put them in the maybe pile because um, I haven't really been working with them that much. Um, so I'll decide as I'm putting these decks back if I'm going to put them in maybe or put them in definite keep. So that is the end of part one and um, really hoping that we don't continue to say yes to 95% of the decks I go through. But like I said, the advice that y'all gave me was, you know, start with the ones that you know you want to keep because that'll be easy. And then um, next up, I'm going to go shelf. I'm going to start going shelf by shelf. So thank you for joining me. And um, as we dive deeper, I'm hoping that the maybe and giveaway piles grow rather large. Love to all. Thank you.